What's up, body babes? So the star of this video is going to be the beautiful banana plant. I wanted to highlight this plant today because I kind of had some misconceptions about the care love, the care difficulty of him. I really thought he was gonna be really, really hard to take care of because in my mind, he's more of a tropical plant. And since I live in a desert, I thought it would be much harder to take care of than he really is. But my partner really encouraged me to get him and had a lot more, I think, confidence in my plant skills in the beginning than I personally did. But turns out he is so much easier to take care of than I thought. One of the few problems I've had with the banana plant are just that these bottom leaves tend to get cracked and kind of crispy. But I believe that this, this cracking that happens on the leaf is because of its position in my plant room. It's sitting in a spot where I always kind of have to walk in between it and bump against the leaves. And so I think that cracks and damages the leaves. But I don't think it's a big deal because in the wild, the plant good, deals with wind, animals, rain, all types of things that can really damage these bottom leaves. And I've seen pictures of banana plants in the wild and the leaves do have these cracks in them. So I think it's perfectly fine for, your, for this plant to have these cracks. But one of the things that kind of gives me a little more worry is that it, they always get really crispy. And I'm not sure if the crisping of the bottom leaves is just a natural thing that the plant goes through. As it produces a new leaf, it gets rid of the bottom ones so that way it can become more of a tree and really develop that stem. So I'm not sure if that is the reason why it's doing it or if there is some type of nutrient deficiency because I've read online that sometimes this could be like a nitrogen deficiency or a sulfur deficiency or maybe it needs to get repotted but I'm really thinking that it is just because every time a new leaf comes up it naturally then gets rid of the bottom ones. So this plant has been so easy for me to take care of in my house because I just have had to put it in front of a window and water it the same amount that I would water a monstera. So about once a week and during the summer, I do check it more often to see how that soil's doing and see if it needs to be watered more. But it's really easy upkeep. And I think because of how many tropical plants I have in my house and in like one confined plant room, that does increase the overall humidity of the entire area. So that does contribute to the success in general of my tropical plants. Um, I also have a swamp cooler which if you're unfamiliar with that, swamp coolers just pump water into the air to cool things down rather than air conditioner, which takes water out of the air to cool it down. So the swamp cooler creates a very humid environment in my house, which of course my tropical plant plants love. But even before I lived in this house with the swamp cooler, this plant was doing really well without the humidity. It did have a lot of plants around it, but I haven't really had much issues with it because living in a desert, I have so much sunlight. <laughs> I don't really have a problem with overwatering my plants. The soil really doesn't hang on to moisture the way it does in let's say like Florida or California or some places where there's just a lot more water naturally in the air. If there's more water naturally in the air, then your soil isn't going to dry out as fast. Whereas in a dry desert, there the humidity level is normally less than like 5%. So that's not a lot of water naturally in the air. And so it just kind of evaporates from the soil much quicker. So I don't have an issue with over overwatering the same way that other people do in different climate. Now, if you live in a climate that is different than a dry desert, your plant care routine for a banana plant and most of your other plants is going to be different than my plant routines and my plant care tips that I'm giving here. Now, this idea and method of plant parenting, I'm calling personalized plant care. It's in a similar vein as personalized health care, which in general, kind of an oversimplified explanation of personalized health care is that because each person is different, we have different genes, different medical history, and different, well, all types of different factors, but all of these factors have a role in how each person's body responds to medications or responds to treatments. So in personalized healthcare, medical practitioners really look at all of these factors to find a treatment that works specifically to you. Now, this same concept is something I really want to apply to plants because I think it works really well because I'm sure people have experienced and when you're a new plant parent, you go online when you have yellow leaves and you're like, what's wrong with my plant? 
and the most contradictory information is on like the same paragraph of text. It'll say, it's getting too much water, not enough water, too much sun, not enough sun. Pfft. Like, which is it? How am I supposed to know? Well, with this kind of personalized plant care and really looking at the climate that you live in, the direction of your windows, how much sun is actually coming through these windows, how much humidity you naturally have in your environment, all of these factors contribute to how you can take care of a plant. So if you would like to know more about this or would like to know more of like a personalized plant care for you specifically, please reach out and message me, follow me on Instagram and TikTok and message me there. And then maybe we can figure out how to come up with a personalized plant care specifically for you and your environment. And then once we figure that out, you can become a great plant parent and really develop that green thumb. <laughs> Okay, enough about personalized plant care and back to our banana plant. So I've been told that eventually the banana plant will give me a grandbaby plant just like the snake plants do, and I cannot wait. It hasn't happened yet, but the day that it does, I will be posting it everywhere because I will be so excited. Now, I don't really expect him to ever give me an actual banana, but if he does, what a special treat. So I think that's gonna be about it for this video on the banana plant. But if you see a banana plant and you think, yes, I would love to grow this plant, do it. They're not that hard to care for and I think you'll really find it to be a very satisfying experience. And if you have any questions, just ask me. You know, you can comment or message me on any of my other social media platforms and I would love to help you out. So thanks and I hope you all get banana plants and stay planty. Mm -hmm.